Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at Nine. I'm Naomi Kigon. Now the news in details. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday urged the chief ministers of all the states to reduce taxes on fuel in the spirit of cooperative federalism. Speaking to all the CMs at a COVID-19 review meeting, PM Modi noted that some states did not cut taxes on petrol and diesel after the center cut excise duties. This is unfair to people there, he said. The Prime Minister specifically urged states which have not reduced VAT on fuel to do so as he flagged higher rates in states like Maharashtra, West Bengal and Telangana. PM Modi also said the authorities needed to remain alert as challenge related to the pandemic had not yet gotten over. Stating that health infrastructure had improved a lot due to joint efforts of the centre and states, Modi called for scaling up of the same, including manpower at medical colleges and district hospitals. As we all know, we all know all of the petrol and diesel in the country. On the petrol and diesel in the country, the petrol and diesel कम करने के लिए केंद्र सरकार ने एक्साइज ड्यूटी में कमी की थी पिछले नवंबर महीने में कम की थी केंद्र सरकार ने राज्यों से भी आग्रह किया था कि वो अपने यहां टैक्स कम करें और ये बेनिफिट नागरिकों को ट्रांसफर करें इसके बाद कुछ राज्यों ने तो भारत सरकार की इस भावना के अनुरूप यहां टैक्स कम कर दिया लेकिन कुछ राज्यों द्वारा अपने राज्य के लोगों को इसका कोई लाभ नहीं दिया गया इस वजह से पेट्रोल डीजल की कीमतें इन राज्यों में अब भी दूसरों के मुकाबले कहीं ज्यादा है ये एक तरह से इन राज्यों के लोगों के साथ अन्याय तो है ही साथ ही पड़ोसी राज्यों को भी नुकसान पहुंचाता है The coronavirus pandemic is not over, the World Health Organization warned in Geneva. The health body further said a decline in the number of daily COVID-19 cases and deaths was due to a drop in testing rates. Last week, just more than 15,000 coronavirus-related deaths were reported to the WHO, the lowest weekly total since March 2020. WHO Director General Tetros Atanom Kebriasis told a press briefing on Tuesday. However, the encouraging trend should be interpreted with caution as many countries have scaled back on testing and as a result, the WHO is receiving less and less information about transmission and sequencing, he said. Responding to the European Union's recent decision to enter a new post-emergency phase of the COVID-19 pandemic, Mike Ryan, executive director of the WHO Health Emergencies Program, cautioned that this is not the time to lose focus on the virus nor on its potential to continue to evolve. Aung San Suu Kyi, the ousted civilian leader of Myanmar and Nobel laureate, was on Wednesday found guilty of corruption and sentenced to five years in jail. A Myanmar Hyundai court accused the 76-year-old leader of accepting a bribe of 600,000 cash and gold bars. The case was the first of 11 corruption charges against Suu Kyi, each carrying a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison. Sources quoted by agencies declined to be identified because her trials were being held behind closed doors. Journalists remained barred from attending the court hearings, while Sue Jesus lawyers were have been banned from speaking to the media. Since the military coup deposed her government in February last year, plunging the country into a major civil unrest, Sue Ji had been facing a barrage of criminal cases that could see her jailed for decades. 
The 76-year-old was already sentenced to six years in jail for incitement against the military, breaching COVID-19 rules and breaking a telecommunication law. Although she will remain under house arrest while she fights other charges. Advisor of ITNC, Mundamo Kikon, today launched official state right-of-way portal, portal and awareness workshop on e-services under e-district platform at the Directorate of IT and Communication in Gohima. Speaking at the launching program, Kikon urged user departments to extensively harness the benefits of information technology in providing various government services to citizens do enable the state of Nagaland to move towards digital governance. He highlighted the increased usage of online services in various government departments. E-commerce and e-governance online classes have increased significantly. The inadequate telecom infrastructure is one of uh, the primary attribute for all for all jobs and uh, creating roadblocks to broadband penetration and expansion of mobile coverage. To facilitate speedy installation of mobile towers, optic fiber in a time-bound and non-discretionary manner, and also to simplify the process of obtaining right-of-way permissions. The India Telegraph right-of-way rules 2016 was notified. To, in compliance with the India Telegraph right-of-way uh, rules 2016, a, a comprehensive guideline was notified by the government, state government, on 2nd December 2019, stipulating a set of standards for granting Permission for installation of telegraph infrastructure or overground and underground within the territorial jurisdiction of Nagaland. B. The online portal has been developed by processing of applications and issuing of permission by the nodal officers and approving authority under the same guidelines. Principal Secretary INC KT Vizo said that due to the cooperation extended from all sections of society, the performance of the state in the country is often measured in terms of quality, IT services and electronic transactions. And quality, good quality of telecom services comes only through good connectivity. In the state of Nagaland, due to difficult terrain, inclement weather conditions and other factors, it is a big challenge to lay underground optical fibers. And therefore, the state is slowly moving towards aerial optical fiber connectivity along power transmission lines and wireless connectivity. However, some telecom operators are still going ahead with underground optical fiber laying which requires right-of-way permissions. Even the aerial optical fiber connectivity along power transmission lines, there is a need for all the telecom operators to obtain right-of-way permission from the state government. To facilitate giving quick permission, the state of Nagaland have, have, has already brought a comprehensive right-of-way policy in December 2019 and operators are already utilizing that policy. A two-day workshop on strengthening community resilience to climate change and disaster risk began today at Hotel Vivor in Kohima. The workshop is being organized by the Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority in collaboration with the Insure Resilience Solutions, Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, Swiss Re and Data AIG. Speaking at the inaugural program, advisor to NSDMA Kajedo Kinimi said that the community's resilience should imply as the capability of the community to prepare for, respond to and recover from multi-hazard threats. He also said 
that the process of measuring risk and resilience is a very complex task. However, understanding risk for achieving disaster resilience is very important. Kinimi also added that the government, through its various policies and efforts, has been working towards mainstreaming the concepts of disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation into policy making, planning and implementation processes. Mitigation in the state as per the global climate based index 2021 India is ranked seven most well vulnerable country to climate change impact. Disaster risk reduction and climate change adoption have emerged as two key development issues in recent times. The government through its various policies and effort have been working towards mainstreaming the concept of disaster risk reduction and climate change. Adoption in the policy making, planning and implementation of process. Mainstreaming DR, DDR and CCA into integrated framework at various level and its coordination with different stakeholders and agencies department are also key in strengthening community resilience. Johnny Rongmai, OSD NSDMA, reminded all the stakeholders to work towards the resilience of Nagland and urged all the line department to be prepared as preparedness is the way forward. Eugene Toys IFS highlighted on the insurance mechanism against extreme weather events and roles of insure resilience solutions, challenges to climate change, and DRR in Nagland was presented by Rende Moshidio and SDMA. Be the first state in India to have a disaster policies on ecotourism. Now, if you really look at it, you go to Zalake Valley. Such a green valley, you go there, litters everywhere. We don't want that to see in any part of the ecotourism centers which we are coming up. So we would like to have a policy document so that we follow that. So the objective of this workshop is we would like to help each other to understand the 10 points Prime Minister's agenda on disaster risk reduction, which is the present Prime Minister of India. The Department of Art and Culture organized a two-day book exhibition and sale to promote local authors and publishers in the state. Speaking as the chief guest at the inaugural program, advisor for new and renewable energy, information technology and communication and science and technology, Honlumoki Gon said that authors and publishers in the state should promote one another so that they will be able to come out and get recognized to the outside world. He said, writing and reading culture has seen development. However, focus should also be on the marketing and publishing. The more we promote our stories and cultures, the more, he added. The transition from oral sketch to the written form has many, has crossed many oceans, many stages. And during that period, <coughs> we have also seen many transformations in the way we articulately express and we appreciate our own history and culture. So today, when I see not just the reading culture, but the fact that there are so many authors publishing from our own state, so many writers not just willing to write for themselves, but willing to publish it as well. And the fact that there is now our own local publishers willing to publish local authors. Rita Grocha of Bentril Publication House Kohima shared the publisher experience in Nagaland. She said that over the past eight years, the writing culture in the state has progressed. She said, 
lack of leadership and re readers and platform were the main problems faced in the state. But I have been blessed with a very generous family who have supported me throughout the journey from day one till today. I remember printing the first pencil book with financial contributions from my loved ones and even with nothing left for the second degree, during that point of time, I persisted on. In 2014, I did a certificate course in book publishing at the National Book Trust, New Delhi. If I were to continue doing this, then I might as well learn the basic things that make a publishing house run. The course did help, but as I would realize later, nothing stays with you more than practically experiencing things yourself. Meanwhile, poetry reading was presented by Dr. Teyesinio Getitze, Assistant Professor of Gohima College. The chief guest also released a departmental publication, Archaeology of Mimi Caves. The program is sponsored by the Raja Ram Mohan Roy Library Foundation, Kolkata. It is an initiative of the department to promote local authors and publishers of the state. Peran Government College kicked off its Literary Come Cultural Fest 2022 in commemoration of Peran Town 75th anniversary under the team Celebrating Our Roots and Cultural Heritage in the College Campus. Ethnic cultural show and dances were the major attraction of the first day fest. Special guest of the inaugural program, Additional Deputy Commissioner Peran K. E. Rangting Hegui stressed on the importance of keeping one's own roots and culture alive. He encouraged the congregation to make parent town an educational hub of the district. After an exodus of migrant workers at certain places in India due to the COVID-19 associated first lockdown, the Ministry of Home Affairs in coordination with respective states have set up around 41,000 relief camps and shelters across the country where more than 14 lakh people were sheltered. The annual report for the year 2020-21 released by MHA Reds that due to the lockdown, migrant workers and other persons were stranded in different parts of the country. States and UTs were directed to make adequate arrangements for providing them shelters, food, water, health facilities and also proper counselling. They were also allowed to use state disaster response fund for this purpose and an amount of rupees 11,092 crore was released in advance on April 3, 2020 to all the states so as to augment funds with them, the report said. It further stated around 41,000 relief camps and shelters were set up in the country. More than 14 lakh people were housed there. Besides this, there were 30,000 food camps also. Apart from it, around 17 lakh workers stayed with their employers or in industry campuses where they were pro being provided shelter and food. Tangkul Civil Society Organizations today felicitated Manipur Chief Minister Anbiran Singh on being elected for the second consecutive term to serve the state at DNL Ground, Ukrul District Headquarters. Upon his arrival at the district headquarters, the Chief Minister was accorded a warm welcome by various organizations. Mana, 
Speaking on the occasion, the Chief Minister said that central leaders knew the importance of maintaining a healthy relationship between Hill and Valley people and, as such, had appointed Kasim Vashum, MLA of Chingai AC, as one of his Council of Ministers. Stating that his politics had always been based on humanity and development, the Chief Minister maintained that the state government had been giving focus on all-round development, including adequate supply of drinking water, as priority. He also stressed the need for joint effort of all to achieve a new height of development. Biran also informed that construction of amusement park in Ukrul would be completed soon as a part of the government's 100 action points for first 100 days. I, I approach the Honourable Prime Minister. Her Approach the Rubuki, I mean, Pulukanda, 3,500 crores. World Bank, the key, NDB, the almost Sorsanpur, Taming Long, Tamil, Taming Long, those water supply. Finish Puralo Sengadabuari, Senapati, and that Maman, the election of Manga Sangaki, Sorsanpur, Sandelt, Akoi Ukrugi. ไอ้กี่ปรมิสนี่ไอ้เนี่ยอาหารบ่พอดการบ่ได้กี่ปรมิสไว้กี่ปรมิสไว้กี่ปรมิสไว้กี่ปรมิสไว้กี่ปรม